Welcome into the Young Dad Podcast today. It's Wednesday, December 14th. We are here. We are jolly. We are holly. It's Christmas time. We are T minus 11 days to Christmas. I can do math because it's Wednesday, December 14th. Joining me today, your host Jay, is my beautiful, handsome co host, Aaron. Say something to the people today, if you would, please. Something, people. What's up? How goes it? It goes well, I'm sure, because our listeners are amazing. Today we hit a milestone of an episode today. We hit episode number 10. How about that? Yep, the crowd's excited. We're in the guys. We're in the guys. I'm caffeinated. I'm going to go. I'm proud. We're going to get done these 10 episodes without our amazing live studio audience. Today on the show, we got a holiday would you rather communication, young parents, young in quotation marks, hopefully you understand that, and situationship. So make sure you grab your juice box, grab a snack, and let's get into it. Do you guys know something I love more than almost anything is water. I love cold water from a reusable water bottle. I love water bottles that have an amazing wood finish. I love water bottles that keep your water cold for more than 24 hours at a time, even in the most extreme heat. I love shaker bottles. I love gallon water bottles. I love can koozies. I love custom dog bowls, shaker bottles, bedding, sheets, pillows, comforters, pillow cases, Extra accessories, ice packs, tons of different gifts for him, for her, gift cards. You can get all these and save money at coldest.com. Coldest water brand, the coldest water bottle, the coldest dog bowl, the coldest can coolie, the coldest sheets, the coldest pillow, the coldest everything. They're all amazing and they're all on a site-wide Black Friday sale right now. Save some money, save some extra money when you use code BALLBOY10 at checkout. You can get the new sports finish. You can get the one-gallon jug. You can get tumblers, mugs, the classic bottles, and can coolers, and so much more at thecoldest.com. Check it out. Use code BALLBOY. Use the link in our link tree. However you want to get there, thank us later by getting someone an amazing gift this holiday season or treat yourself. You deserve it. You earn it. You deserve to have cold water. Treat yourself. Think us later. All right, Aaron. To kick us off here, I got to say a nice little holiday joke. How did the Cold War begin? I'm not sure. How did it start? With a snowball. (laughs) Cracked myself up. I cracked myself up. You know, it's the holidays. I figured we'd do some holiday would you rather to get us in the holly jolly spirit. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. So would you rather get the best gift you have ever received again or get a new gift, but you have no idea if it will be good or bad? Uh, I think I got to be in the new gift. You know, I'm in the new gift too, because if it's the best gift probably would remember what that is and still have it yeah it's it's got to be pretty pretty significant so <laughs> i don't want two of them exactly I, one's enough all right next question would you rather have to cook the big holiday meal every year or have to clean up and do the dishes after the holiday meal every year oh cook it for sure 100 percent I would much rather cook than clean as well. Sorry, right, so we're two for two, 100% on the same page. Hopefully we disagree here soon. Would you rather have your ears turn into elf ears or have a Santa beard forever? 
Oh, Santa beard for sure. That thing's mystical. Dang it. You know, we're three for three now. I would also rather have a Santa beard than elf ears because I feel like you would get made fun of a lot less for a Santa beard than an elf ears. Oh, Santa beard is badass, dude. Santa beard, you could rock that so many different ways. I would probably shave my head and be bald with the Santa beard, you know? Yeah. And I would dye my eyebrows white. (laughs) You would have to. You would look so weird if you have this white awesome beard and then you have dark eyebrows like both of us do yeah i don't know i guess it would with the santa beard you can do a lot of things you could style it different ways true you could glitter beard it too oh no i don't know about that (laughs) i don't know about that one all right here's a good one would you rather be famous for starring in a cheesy holiday movie or not be famous at all Oh, that's easy. I'd just rather not be famous. I oh. Not because of the whole cheesy movie, but I just wouldn't want to be famous ever. Oh, I'm taking the holiday cheesy holiday movie because the royalty <laughs> that you're going to get on that year after year? <laughs> Man. Like, do you know how much Mariah Carey makes just off her royalties on her Christmas songs? I don't. Do you? I heard it somewhere a couple weeks ago on the radio, and it was a crazy number. Well, yeah, dude, I mean, that's like, that's how you know Christmas season is here. Or not even Christmas season, like holiday season. So even before, like, Thanksgiving, it's just, it's playing everywhere. Everywhere. Like, the royalties, dude. Just think of the royalties. All right, last one here. Would you rather have an eggnog machine instead of a coffee machine at work year-round or have your corporate dress code require ugly Christmas sweaters? Mm, I'd say the eggnog machine because... I don't really prefer coffee too much, so I'm not losing anything, but I definitely wouldn't want to wear a Christmas sweater every day, an ugly one at that. I don't know. If everyone's doing it, you can kind of compete for who's going to have the ugliest Christmas sweater, you know? Yeah. I would, I'm going to take the ugly Christmas sweater because I could rock an ugly Christmas sweater 365 a year. Even in the summer? Oh, no, because it's so hot. Yeah, dude. Imagine the thick, ugly Christmas sweater oh. filled with sweat. It's no bueno. But you get to take it off. You just have to wear it to work. I don't know. You could get a dress code violation for that. I mean, that's true. <laughs> oh, man, now I'm rethinking it. <laughs> uh, I do love me some eggnog, but I'm going to get... I don't drink a lot of coffee either, so I could probably get down with the eggnog machine. I'll just keep some vodka in my desk. So, that's our holiday would you rather. We'll be right back after a short break as we jump into communication. All right, everyone. Before we get into our discussion on communication here. So, a dad asked his kid, why is your January report card so bad? The kid said, things are always marked down after Christmas. Thank you, band. Thank you, band. Appreciate that. So the holidays are super hard, especially as a parent and a partner. You are running around, you're going to different events, family gatherings, dinners, parties, celebration, holiday things for the kids. It can be chaos and chaotic. This time of year, how do you communicate at the like most basic level with your partner? Let's start there. Um, I mean, just like how you normally do throughout the rest of the year, I would say during the holidays, it's a lot of like compromise, you know, you have to sacrifice doing stuff that you want to do for, you know, maybe something your partner wants to do or making sure you can make time for doing holiday things with the kids. That's true. That's true. Cause there, I mean, there's so much going on and you you mentioned sacrificing or compromising something that you might want to do that instead the other option is going somewhere with people that maybe not your favorite people on the other side of the family or across the table from you or whatever, but it's the holidays and you kind of just have to suck it up and do it. 
but yeah, it's it's a big it's a big time of year. You have to compromise, sacrifice, and kind of just bite the bullet both ways um, to make it to make it through this time of year. Yeah, dude, you definitely have to find a good balance in like avoiding things that will cause a, con- a confrontation or I'm not sure that's the right word, but. You know, you just gotta relieve some of that pressure by giving in every now and then. Exactly, you gotta try to avoid the conflict as much as you can because there's definitely things that will make the conflict arise, whether it's going somewhere, doing something, or who knows what it is or what it could be. But there's gonna be conflict, and it's just gonna be due to the stress of the time of year and the expectations and all the above. So yeah, you kind of have to just suck it up sometimes both partners do both ways and just kind of get through it for the other person um from time to time yeah and i find like once you you might dread doing something and then once you're actually there you're like oh you know it's not too bad it's not as bad as i thought that is literally me to a t and you know that because i hate leaving home yeah i think you're just like an overthinker (laughs) you have a lot of anxiety (laughs) <laughs> oh, I I am the person that if anyone asks, hey, let's go out. Hey, let's go do this Christmas thing. Or, hey, this is what's going on this weekend. Or, you know, do you want to go? And I'm like, no. Like, just instantly. It's not even like a thing. It's just like, no, I don't. Yeah, well, like, from what I know, it's like with you, you like to have stuff planned out. And I'm the complete I'm opposite. Plan. Like, I love having, like, a somewhat plan of what we're going to do. Like, hey, we're going to hit these main things, but I don't mind having a little detour every here and there. No, no, I got to I'm the person that has to have a plan. Like, okay, we're going to go at this time to this place, and we're going to go to this place, and we're going to go to this place. Because that's all I have. That's all my battery is charged for, for that, for, for those three things, or A, B, C, D, or whatever it is. And... You know, a lot of a lot of people are either like one of us. They're either like, okay, cool. You know, here's the rough outline of the plan. Whatever happens along the way, cool. And then there's people who are like me that are like, no, I got to have the plan. I got to know the plan. We're gonna stick to the plan because that's all I have the social battery for. And for people like me, you have to, if you're the person, if you're like me, I have to communicate with those I'm around, saying, hey, yo, I'm tapped out. Like I will work Christmas party on Friday. This week, and my first reaction to it when it was like talked about and like planned and stuff, I'm like, I'm not going. I am not going. Yeah, and you know, it's like my my wife is the same way. Like she hates it that I do things like that, but I find like once I actually drag her out to the stuff that I want to do, she's like, oh, I guess it's not bad. Yeah, no, once I'm there and, you know, I got over the initial like social anxiety or you know my battery kicks in my social battery that's what I call it I call it my social battery kind of you know realizes okay kick in get to work or whatever it is then I'm I'm normally pretty good and I'm chilling and I'm I'm able to enjoy the time while I'm there but afterwards I am just like I'm done yeah and you know it's 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 not a bad thing it's just you know people have different preferences and different things that they like. There's nothing wrong with that. Exactly. And no, you have to know your partner's preferences. You have to know your partner, communicate with your partner, say, Hey, you know, I'll go with that, but I don't want to stay for more than an hour or so, whatever it is, or whatever the time frame might be. Let's say it's like a, a holiday party at work that's, you know, planned to start at six and goes until 10 partner might say, Oh, I only want to be there for two hours. Like tops. I think that's all I can handle kind of thing but i'm willing to stay for more if i'm enjoying it but know that two is where i want to kind of be at max and then both people have to agree on that like oh yeah no we can make that do you know make the rounds in two hours talk eat hang out in those two hours with coworkers and whatnot so you just have to have that kind of communication with your partner whatever you're doing and whatever side of it you might be on now for okay kids, so oh sorry. go ahead sorry go ahead go ahead no, I'm, I just wanted to sidebar off of something you said there. So where's your stance on this, right? So my wife has a Christmas party, but 
but it's employee only. So there is no extra family going. And I know that it like it, it tends to get rowdy. So uh-huh. where do you, like me, I'm totally okay with it. I trust my wife 100%. So, oh, yeah, I right. but I know some men just can't do it. They'd be out no. in the parking lot waiting. <laughs> no, I get you. And I can say I've grown a lot over the years to where it's like, oh, no, if I'm not going, you're not going. Like being kind of that guy where it's like, well, I'm going to check in on you a lot, you know, kind of thing. And that's just, you know, personal insecurities of the person, I think. Uh, but now I'm not partnered anymore. So it's hard for me to be objective on that. But honestly, if there was that instance where it's like, okay, cool. You know, how are you going to get there? How are you going to get home? Kind of thing. Are you going to need me to stay up to come and get you in case you're drinking? Do you need me to drop you off? Or are you going to get a ride with someone? Like, what's your logistical plan of getting to point A to point B and B back to A? You know what I mean? No, you're you're doing your thing again. You're you're planning things out too much. <laughs> oh no, I just want to know how they're going to get there, how they're going to get home. Like I'm that's what's joking. important to me. Yeah, but I'm no, I'm. You're you're completely right. It's. It's a it's a a balance, right? Another thing you have to balance on because yeah. I feel like it's even the same way when I go out. When I do things by myself without the kids, without my wife, yeah, I'm out having fun, but also at the same time, it's like you know, I need to be responsible. I need to communicate, let them know exactly what I'm doing, when I'll be home, when should they expect me to come. Yeah, you know, just it's little things like that that help keep all that negative stuff away. Exactly, and you know personally i don't need a play-by-play if i'm in that situation like you are i don't need a play-by-play of you know checking every half hour around the half hour kind of thing but like checking with me a couple times you know let me know kind of a rough time frame of when you're leaving when you're coming back how you're getting there things like that just so i know kind of like what 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 i need to expect like for myself and that's just me as a person like i just need to know like I don't want a surprise here, like a surprise call, like, oh, I'm out later. Oh, I'm already asleep and now I have to wake up and do this. Like, I'm going to be grumpy kind of thing. So, you know, I like yeah. to plan, like, the part the part I'm going to have in it, but I'm totally cool with it. Like, go have fun. Like, you have to trust your partner in those situations. I mean. I mean, also, too, I feel like that's, like, that's something as an adult you have to be able to have. I don't care if you've been in a relationship for 10, 20 years and, you know, things haven't been the greatest. You still always need to have time away from your partner, away from your kids where you're just having fun. You know, it may not be a whole night out where you're getting blackout drunk, but, yeah. you know, just like an hour or two with my buddies playing cards or, you know, having a drink. It's 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 nice, man. It, it relieves a lot of stress. Yeah, no, and I think it's needed. I think it's healthy. So I agree with you there. And, you know, if it's a Christmas party and it's the same people that they go to work with every day anyway, you know, you trust them to go to work the same. I mean, what's... Yeah. And also, too, it's like they, you know, you see people at work more than you see the people at home. So it's like you have to have a good relationship, maintain healthy relationships with your, your people at work. Exactly. No, I agree. So I'm I'm cool with it. I mean, do you just communicate with me, check in with me, let me know you're safe, let me know you're good kind of thing, but I don't need a play-by-play. Just make sure you get home safe. You know, that's the biggest thing, especially if there's going to be alcohol. Just make sure that your partner gets home safe. Yeah. Whatever it is. So from there, we're talking about our partners now. Let's talk about kids. There's a lot riding on this time of year for kids. Like they are probably the most stressed and most tense this time of year more than any other time of year. Cause they know how much is riding on it for them. Um, how do you communicate with your kids this time of year? Cause you know, there's, there's a lot of plays that we have in our pocket, a lot of cards that we have as parents. So what are you doing with your kids this time of year that might be different opposed to the rest of the year? Um, for myself, like my, my oldest daughter, she's already kind of hip to the whole uh, idea of Santa not being real. And, you know, she's it's more realistic uh, take on things. So, I mean, I try and focus a lot on communicating, like, the reason for the season and, you know, just getting out and doing things that, you know, not every kid's going to do. Maybe going and volunteering or, mm-hmm. you know, donating stuff, you know, just 
it, it's it's different, right? So uh, the way I grew up, it's like, oh, you know, Christmas, Santa, but I wanted something different for my kids, and that's what I chose. So, no, I love that, and my kids are still very into Santa, Elf on the Shelf, um, although all the fun Christmas things for kids, you know. And I'm never going to take that away from them. As long as they believe in it, then I'm going to support it. And when they don't and they figure it out, then they figure it out. But I'm not I'm going to let them figure that out on their own, in their own time. But, yeah, I, know. I definitely agree. But it, we talked about this the other day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did. My daughter, my daughter actually, uh, she busted us one year. And that's how she found out. We were wrapping gifts. And she's like, what are you guys doing? I thought Santa was supposed to do this. <laughs> I'm very upset about it, but yeah, yeah, man, it's it's fun. Once, like, so my oldest daughter, she's in on the the whole act for that we set up for my youngest daughter, and so she nice. she enjoys like the whole wrapping presents and all that. So yeah, it makes it fun. But no, I'm definitely there as well with with my oldest, my older daughter, where I took her to this work event where we were sponsoring like up to 40 families, like give them food and bought toys for the kids and gift cards, things like that. And I took her with me to that and she helped, you know, make the bags of food. She helped bring stuff in. She helped decorate the place. She helped set up the tree, wrap some presents. And just was like, just very involved in like the whole process. And, you know, same thing, you know, you have to do the things, find the time, make the time for your kids to be able to learn that it's more about others than it is about them. Um, we kind of touched on this a couple of few weeks ago and we kind of keep hitting on it just because it's so important to to both of us to make sure that we're putting that right message out there for our fellow parents. You know, we want to help. We want to make sure that our kids are good humans at the end of it. When they leave our homes, we want to make sure they're good humans. And it starts now, it starts when they're young and it continues and it can start it can stop. It can start. It can stop. We always want to make sure we're trying to make sure our kids are good humans. So yeah, at least for me, like the whole the whole thing of um, why I am the way I am is, you know, the best gift for me is is bringing joy to other people. You know, it may not be mm-hmm. something big or something, you know, special, but, you know, just doing stuff for others is, is something I've always enjoyed. You know, I've, you don't really find too much happiness in material things. You know, it lasts for like a day or two, but then it fades. But you yep. impacting on other people's lives, it, it sticks around forever, man. Oh, 100%. 100%. And that's what's important to teach our kids is that, yeah, these presents are going to be cool. Or you're going to be over them in a couple of days, in a week next year. You're going to be over them in a week come the new year. But, you know, the things you do, the memories that you're going to make helping people, and the more you help people, that's what's really going to impact you as an individual and as a parent and as with your relationship with your kids as well. And then the last part that I want to hit on here is communicating with the rest of your friends and your family this time of year, because you're so busy as an individual, but you also want to make sure you make those holiday calls, those holiday check-ins, or, you know, plan to do things with all these people because it's, you know, the time of year that you're supposed to do all that. Um, So how are you communicating with like your friends and extended family this time of year? Uh, yeah, I did. Just like you said, um, just reaching out, you know, sending out cards or, you know, just doing a, a checkup for your family that you're not so close with and talk to every day. But at the same time, also communicating, you know, with that close side of your family, like, oh, you know, I'm not going to be available. I'm going to be doing this or, you know, I'm going to be doing that. You know, it, it just avoids a lot of problems, you know, just mm-hmm. don't hire someone's expectations and then let them down. Exactly. And I think, you know, being direct with people also helps. Don't kind of leave them hanging like, oh, yeah, I might I might be there. Be like, oh, yeah, no, I'm not going to be there. Or, yeah, I'm going to be there. And if you commit to something, you know, keep that commitment. Yeah. And if, you're, if your plans need to change, then you communicate that as, in a reasonable time. If it's a last minute thing, of course, people need to understand it's a last minute thing. And if they have a negative reaction to that, so what? That's on them. That's not on you. But yeah. I've never understood that, man. Like, if if I come out to you and I tell you truthfully, hey, man, I'm I'm not gonna make it. Like, we have, you know, something else to do. I don't. I've never understood people getting mad at me or you know upset. Like, oh, well, I thought you said you're gonna come or this and that. It's like, look, man, I could have lied to you and just told you, like, oh yeah, maybe I'll be there in an hour. Right. Like, an hour later, like I'll be there in two hours. Like, 
Yeah. No, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just going to be straight up with you, tell you, like, no, we have something else to do. So, you know. Yeah, it was just like time. with our plans, you know, that didn't, didn't end up happening, unfortunately. But, you know, I wasn't, I was sad at the situation, but there was no, like, ill feelings toward you or what was going on and the reason behind it. Because A, you were transparent with me, and B, you communicated way far ahead of time. And, like, it was fine. Like, I, yeah, I was sad, but okay. Like, let me get over it next time. You know, there, there's going to be a next time, ideally, you know. Yeah, and, and you, the, the whole thing behind that is, you know, you don't want to ruin your relationship with somebody just because you have to lie to them to exactly. make yourself feel better about it. You know, it's like... Yeah, it sucks. You know, things could have been different, but, you know, life happens. Things yeah. happen to people, and you just got to find a way to make it happen the next time. Yeah, no, agree. And I think it's, you know, just be transparent with those people who are more extended, inviting you to things. Say, hey, you know, I'm just, you know, straight up, I don't think I'm going to make it. You know, these other things are going on, or, you know, it's going to be hard for me to do that. So, unfortunately, this time I'm going to be out. But, you know, let's let's plan to still hang out. Let's Let's still plan, you know, let me call you tonight around whatever time and talk and catch up with you you know the same thing but on a more personal basis you know yeah you know it's it's that's another thing too that's another side to it is you can't always be you know putting people off you know if if you're going to be that way you're better off just you know severing a relationship you know you got to make time for people and kind of just you know spread yourself evenly if that makes any sense no, 100% does. But of course, you know, in addition to that, make time for the people that also make time for you. Yeah, no, 100%. Make it make it a fair two-way street, you know. Value yourself, value your time, your energy, the same that they value theirs. And if they give it to you, make sure that, you know, it's a relationship where you're able to reciprocate that. So any any last thoughts on communication with your partner kids extended friends and family this time of year uh yeah man spread the love you know spread the love be direct don't be afraid yeah man i love that i mean phone call doesn't cost you nothing i mean you pay the same on your phone bill anyway no matter how many calls you make and you know make that extra phone call call that person call that family member you know do those make those calls that you're probably dreading making, but by the end of the call, you'll be, you'll be happy you made it. So just just make them, just do it, and just you know have that conversation. Check up with someone because that person reaching out to you might really just need someone to talk to, and you just never know the impact that you can have on someone by just answering or responding to a message and then setting up a time to catch up and things like that. You know, you just never know. So don't be afraid to, like you said, spread the love. Do you want to give someone just an amazing gift this holiday season? Well, let me help you out. You know someone that loves to cook, loves flavor, but doesn't love all the extra things that come in your normal store-bought seasoning? That's why Danos is amazing. Low sodium, zero calories, all natural ingredients, four amazing flavors. Original, everything bagel, spicy, and chipotle. It's all natural. It's low sodium. It's Danos seasoning. Yum, yum get you some use our link in our link tree use our code ballboy at checkout to save some money support your favorite podcast and to give someone some amazing flavor this holiday season Thank you, thank you to our live studio audience. Thank you to you guys listening. We appreciate your guys' support. We appreciate every share, every listen, and everything that you do to support us in this podcast. Aaron, you and I both had kids fairly young, especially for today's standards. My first kid was born when I was just barely over the age of 22. You were what? 20, 19. 19. So we were 19 both. 19 turning 20. We were both yep. pretty young. Um, you know, a lot of men nowadays are like, oh, I got to be 30. You know, it's like. 30 or 27 or it's not as young as we were let's just say that much oh yeah dude i mean we both had kids very young but let me tell you 
being 20, uh, 26, I, I'm i already starting to feel it, and I would hate to have kids in my 30s. <laughs> oh, my goodness, dude. Yes. Like, I mean, yeah, my knees are a little bit, you know, more degraded because of, like, sports and all that when I was younger. Oh, yeah. But, you know, dealing with it in my 30s, I'm like, I don't know if I can oh, do that. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad I didn't have, like, crazy 20s. Like, I haven't had, like, a crazy like phase in my 20s of like just activity and things like that outside of like kids and whatnot but like seeing my friends who were in the same age group just like all these hiking and things like that and it's like I went to high school with you guys like we all played the same sports like don't your knees hurt yeah (laughs) doesn't your back hurt and I'm gonna embarrass myself to all the listeners right now as my voice cracks but a couple a few weeks ago I was doing laundry and I went to pick up the laundry basket and I had my youngest daughter in the laundry basket. She's two. And I bent over, picked up the laundry basket and my back went out. (laughs) Yeah, dude. uh, 20. I'm almost 28. I'm 28 in a few months. 20s is the new 50, dude. Don't, Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Yeah. Listeners, especially... Our friends who are in their mid to late twenties, it's over. Yeah, and it's funny. Still, it's, it's funny over. because a, a lot of the older guys I work with, they just tell me it gets worse. Like, oh yeah, I remember that. It gets worse. <laughs> Honestly, same. They're like, oh yeah, wait till you, you know, wait till you gain your your old man weight and yeah. all this. And it's like, I don't want to gain my old man weight. Can I not? Can I just get the old man muscles? Because, like, you ever notice those guys who were, like, in their, like, 40s and 50s? They just have, like, the old man muscles. Yeah, dude, like, my dad, he he's a lot older than me. So he's... Obviously. He's, like, in his 70s now. But he's, like, got that, like, grown man strength. Just, like, crazy strong for no reason. He yeah. Work out, like, just an average guy. But this guy could lift up a fridge for sure just by himself. Yeah. Yeah, it's like I want I want the old man muscle. I don't want the aches and pains right now. I just want the old man strength. And it sucks because I don't have it yet. It's like, did I even get the dad strength at this point? It doesn't feel like it. Yeah, it's it's coming in. You gotta wait. Once your once your girls hit their teens, it'll hopefully come in. Dude, I'm gonna need it by then. I'm gonna need it. Have to knock a lot of kids out. I'm just kidding. I'm not I'm not gonna be one of those dads that's gonna threaten my daughters relationships and create toxicity for my daughters i'm I'm not well i might as it stands right now i won't but we'll see play by ear you know what i mean yeah dude i mean back getting back on on subject you know i as much as i i missed out on you know i i was the first one in my group of friends to have kids but as much as i missed out on i would not trade this life for anything like, I, I don't care if I would go on to be in the, like NFL or, you know, if I went on to do other things, you know, I would not give it up for this. Oh, 100%. Like, I'm honestly so glad that my elbow injury happened my senior year and I was forced to change all my plans and the plans that did happen and the way life unfolded. Like, I wouldn't trade a shot at probably most double A, triple A baseball for what I have now, like at all. Yeah, dude. Being being a family man very young, I think, is the way to go because it helps you grow up quicker, helps you realize what life's all about. 100%. And, yeah, you and I, you know, we missed out on a lot, com- societally speaking, like stereotypically speaking, you know. But honestly, like you said, I'm so okay with it because my back probably would have hurt a lot earlier than it does. <laughs> And I would probably also have that extra weight that I don't need. But, yeah, so, question for you here. When you first told your family you were having a kid, what was, like, the initial reaction? Oh, I still remember. It's my dad telling me, like, what? How can you have a kid? You're still a kid. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I know, but I'm having a kid. <laughs> yeah, my dad... I'm pretty sure he either said I'm 
stupid or a dumbass and then congratulations. I'm like, thanks, you're going to be a grandpa. He's like, oh, I'm too young to be a grandpa. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, in your 40s, dude. He's like, yeah, exactly. I'm too young to be a grandpa. I'm like, well, that's your fault for you having kids young, too. Yeah, it's, I mean, it was, don't get me wrong. It, it was a big shock to my family. But, you know, it was that first 30 minutes of, like, shock and then just a lot of happiness after that. Yeah, no, I would definitely say my dad came around as, you know, first baby got closer and he came out. We put a crib together, him and me. And, you know, I, when I took down the crib a few months ago um, and transitioned my youngest into a big girl bed, like it all just kind of came flooding back. Just like all the memories, like, man, I remember putting this thing together the first time. And this is probably the last time I'll take it down or put it together. And just like remembering all of it, you know, thinking back all the last five, six years and the ups, the downs, the challenges, the struggles, like, man, it's, it's been great. It sucked at times, it's been really difficult. And, you know, I made a lot of mistakes along the way, I still make mistakes every single day, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it at all. Cause these, these are my best years. I wouldn't have wanted to have a kid in like now have my first kid now or in the next couple of years because I I don't think I would have been or would be as good or decent of a parent that I am. Yeah, no, and and it's you know, I would kill to have that same motivation that I had when I was, you know, 19 and I found out I was going to have my first kid. You know, I just got so much done and I just like I really kicked myself in the year. Yeah, no, same. And, you know, that's, I mean, I'm pretty sure I would have just stayed out of school. I don't think I would have gone back. I don't think I would be, you know, graduating my bachelor's here in a couple months if, you know, I didn't have the kids and I didn't want to show them, hey, if it, even if it takes, you know, 10 years after you graduate high school to get your bachelor's, you know, do it. If that's what you want to do, do it. Don't, don't stop. Keep chasing. You know, life's going to throw you curveballs and roadblocks and things like that. But don't. Yeah, dude, it's, it, you know, I'm in the same boat, too. I got my associates and my bachelor's in one uh, field of study. And like I told you, I'm going to end up going back and doing another program just because I have changed my mind. You know, I found something else that I want to do and I'm going to stick to that. And, you know, it, it is another accomplishment that I want to share with my girls just to show them you know you can you can do whatever you put your mind to you know it's never too late exactly and just like the motivation that you know that I needed all these years since having kids I don't think I would have had it if I didn't have them you know I would just be you know at the gym playing basketball for two three hours a day working out you know in bars you know, just doing all the things that I'm not doing now and probably wouldn't be that healthy. I'd probably be a lot more depressed, a lot more just kind of meh with my life. And not everyone's like that. You know, there's a lot of people who are super fine with that life and the kidless life and they're, that's very much their choice, what they want 100%. And it's like, I respect that. That's, that's your life. That's your choice. That's what you want. Like, that's awesome. I couldn't live your life, and they couldn't live my life. And that's okay, because it's not for everyone. Yeah, I guess the only reason I, I take this stance is because I've seen, like, a lot of a lot of the uh, older cousins in my family, they chose to go that way. And, you know, don't get me wrong, they're happy, they enjoy life, but, you know, around the, the seasons, it's it's clear to see that they, they wish they had the the family or the experience to be able to share with your family during the holidays, you know, just like having your own, you know, I mean, I mean, you're still a part of the, the big family, you know, your family, but having your own family with someone else, you know, it's, it's a whole nother experience that brings a whole different meaning to life. Exactly. And that's exactly what it is. It's a whole new experience. And I feel like there's a lot of pressure on people who are kind of, you know, on the fence, like, I feel like most people, families nowadays get it like, okay, that's not going to be for you. Get it. Not going to push it. 
you know, at least when it comes to the parents, there's some grandparents that are like that. If they're a little bit younger, they get it. If they're a little bit older, a little bit more traditional, they don't really understand it the same. But at the end of the day, you kind of have to respect their choices, not push them and, you know, make them feel bad about their choices as opposed to supporting them. But also, no, I agree. There is, you know, something missing. You look at those people, you do see something missing. And it's like, you can still have this. It might look different than what I have, but if you want it, you can have it. You know, you just have to go and find it, you know, with the right person in the right time, you know? Yeah. And then, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't mean you're any less valuable or, you know, that you don't, you, you don't mean as much to people, but you know, it, it does provide something that you will not get anywhere else. You know what I mean? This is a really unique feeling and I, I'm honored, you know, to be able to have my own family and to be able to provide for them, especially around these times, like the holiday times, it's, it brings so much joy, man. Just giving my kids something I wanted so much growing up, you know, it's just mm-hmm. like the the stereotypical, you know, Oh, you know, daddy's home or, you know, the Christmas time and you're on the, the tree or up in the snow, like as a family, it's just, it's, it's just so much to enjoy. Exactly. And I want to piggyback off something you said there, that it doesn't make you any less valuable. And I definitely want to say that to our female listeners, since we do have a huge female listenership out there, you know, your worth isn't defined by what is in or has came out of or not come out of your womb and that you created or not created. Your worth isn't defined by that. And same for men. It's not about what you have done, haven't done, kind of things like that. Your worth is created on how you treat people and kind of how you, what you provide. Cause you can still be, you know, an awesome uncle and aunt, awesome part of a child support system, godparent, you know, whatever your role may be in a child's life. And you can still be that and you can be the best at it. And you should 100% be the best at it. Even if you're not in that parent role, whatever role you're in and the supporting role, be the best you can be and do your part to to help and to to just be the best you can and help that kid as much as you can. Yeah, 100%. I mean, just cuz you don't have kids doesn't mean you can't impact on on a couple, you know. <laughs> I I know if if I didn't have kids right now, I'd have plenty of nieces and nephews to to be there for and and to do something for. 100%. And even not that not not just that, dude. I mean, you can also reach out to kids in your community, you know, who are less fortunate. You know, it doesn't yeah. need to be your family. You can you can be that light for anyone. Exactly. There's so many programs. Like there's the Boys and Girls Club. There's Big Brother Big Sister programs. There's volunteer programs. You can go down to the Children's Hospital and volunteer. You can go to the pediatric unit of the hospital and volunteer. If you're religious, you can volunteer in the children's ministry at your church. Like there's so many ways to impact children in your lives. If that's something you feel like you you want and you kind of wanted to see what it would be like to be in kind of one of those roles and impacting if you don't have it directly available to you within your family or you, they're far away from those people in your family, you know, go into your community. There's plenty of kids that need awesome people to help them, to support them, to love them, and to be that light, like you said, in their lives. Any any last thoughts on this, Aaron? And thank you to the band. Thank you to the audience. Thank you to the listeners. Once again, just thank yous all around. We brought back Situationship for episode 10 just because I really like it and it's fun and we like it. So we're going to do it. And these are kind of holiday themed. And I bet some of these have happened to our listeners more than they're going to admit. So if it has happened to you, then let us know what you actually did. So Aaron, your first situation here, you're at JC Penny, So you're at the mall. You bump into a mannequin, and you turn around, and you say, sorry, and then you say, I thought you were a person, and then you realize you're still talking to the mannequin. How do you mentally, emotionally, and socially recover from this? 
<laughs> first things first, I look around to see if anybody saw it. And if nobody, yeah. nobody saw it, I'm going to go ahead and brush it off and, and you know, get as far away from that mannequin as possible. Okay, but, okay, let's say people <laughs> saw it. Someone saw you, people are looking at you talking to this mannequin because you're like, oh, I thought you were a person. And then you just keep talking to the mannequin and people are looking at you now. <laughs> let's say you're with your wife and she notices it. Like, how are you recovering from this? I don't know. I just, I would have to play it off smooth, man. Like, yeah, they're making these things really realistic now. <laughs> so, okay, weird story, but for our grandpa Ron, when he was alive, as he got older, he gave less um, Fs about what people thought. And he was this way basically his whole life. But I distinctly remember when I lived with him, we went somewhere and he, um, how do I say this as a gentleman? He had bumped into a mannequin that was a female mannequin. And he did this. He said sorry because he thought it was a person. And I'm like, uh, Tutu, because I called him Tutu. I'm like, Tutu, that's not a person. I'm like 14. And he's like, oh. And he's like, well then. And then he gropes the mannequin. And I'm just confused and uncomfortable. And so that's how he recovered from it, is that he just, you know, made the mannequin his own. Yeah, and then he realized it was a real person? Is that, is that where that story takes a turn? No, no, it was a mannequin the whole time. He just <laughs> straight up, like, groped the mannequin and then, like, um, said something to me. I don't remember what he said, but then he did it again. And then someone looked at him, saw him doing it. And he just like laughed it off and just went like about his life. Like he, nothing happened. Yeah. And I, I was just so confused and uncomfortable. I never brought it up again. Yeah. That's, I don't think I'd be able to deal with that. <laughs> I would just walk away. <laughs> yeah. I just, I don't know. I just kind of went with it. Um, so yeah, for me, I'm just, I'm probably just going to play into it. I'm just going to have the conversation, make it look like I'm, you know, joking with them. Like, talking to him kind of like you were but i'm gonna keep the conversation going you know i think i'm just gonna keep talking see what happens maybe it's an ai one who knows all right next you're at starbucks or duncan or whatever coffee place you want to be at or i gotta say starbucks for this one you go inside you get your order you're on the phone you get back in the car you finish your conversation on your phone and then you realize you're in the wrong car. What happens next? See, this one, this is another one. You need the context. You have to know, is somebody in the car? Yes, is someone it... else is in the car. So you were the passenger in your car. And you <laughs> get out. Okay, let's say you go to Starbucks on a lunch break with a coworker. They drive. You get out. You go and get the order because you ordered ahead. Come out. You get back into the wrong car because you're on the phone. You don't realize this but there's also someone else already in that same car. You just get in, get off the phone, and you turn, and you look at it, and you're like, here's your drink, and you realize it's the wrong person. Why oh, yeah, next? dude, you just, I mean, for me, I wouldn't say anything. I'd just be like, oh, sorry, and just get out. <laughs> I would be like, you want this drink? <laughs> My bad. Like, for me, you know, since I'm single now, and um, if it's at Starbucks, and she's attractive you know i'm gonna shoot players gotta play and he's gotta shoot shot um yeah i, I don't i don't know if that's her up. that that wants you want that to be the first interaction you have with it's gonna woman. be memorable <laughs> it's gonna be memorable I don't, I don't know you know it's gonna be a great story to tell at the wedding yeah he just he sat in my car and he just offered me a drink and that's how it started and the rest is history <laughs> <laughs> all right we're going to go back to JCPenney now, but this time you work at JCPenney. So you're a worker at JCPenney. You work there. You open a dressing room for someone. They say, thanks. And you try to say, you're welcome. Like, you are welcome. And also, no problem at the same time. You end up saying, you're a problem. What happens next? Oh, uh, dude, this is, the same, this is the same level as if... Your waiter brings you your food, 
<laughs> and they tell you enjoy and you say yeah you too <laughs> no 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 it's, that's not there it's the same it's the same level you just call them a problem it's the same level because you, the way you recover from it you just tell oh i misspoke and then you just say oh yeah and then it's like awkward but then you go about you know go about your way try on your clothes <sighs> I feel like a lot of people now would just say, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're not wrong. And would probably just play into it, especially if you're working at JCPenney, just like thinking of like who goes in there and shops. Probably the response you're going to get at like any retail store. I would just go with it and be like, yeah, you know, me too. It's fine. Um, like, hi, I'm the problem. It's me. I'm the problem. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, I think you kind of just go with it and you hope that they don't notice and you hope that they just say thanks and go and try on their clothes and then they end up thinking about it for the rest of their day probably the rest of the week and they tell so many people about it and they just it's just burned into their brain and now this experience lives rent free in both your head and their head rent free it's one of those all right, that's our three. Listeners, we want to know. Drop us in the comments on whatever platform you're listening to this on what you would do in each of these situations because we want to know how you would recover from talking to a mannequin if you got into the wrong car at Starbucks or if you told someone they're a problem um, at work. We want to know. Aaron, any last thoughts or anything you want to say to the listeners? Uh, yeah, be... Um... On the lookout for someone you can you can help this holiday season. There's a lot of people out there, unfortunate, you know. Um, but you know, just a, a couple minutes of your time or you know, a couple of dollars out of your pocket can change that whole person's holiday. I love that. And I'm gonna add on to that. Let's let's just invite our listeners. We're not gonna challenge, we're gonna invite our listeners. To next time they're at the grocery store, they go to the mall or anywhere they go, if they're able to, to drop a can into the food donation bin or to buy a cheap toy and drop it into the Toys for Tots bin or, you know, go through their closet, find that jacket that they never wear anymore and donate that coat, donate a blanket, whatever they can do to help someone, you know, find a way and do it. Spread that cheer, help someone out. And then on top of that, you know, do something nice for someone today. Uh, after you listen to this, while you're listening to this, go, go do something nice for someone. Compliment someone, call someone, tell someone they're pretty, tell someone they're beautiful, compliment them, whatever it is. Just do something kind, say something nice to someone today, and then spread some holiday cheer this season. I love that. We appreciate you guys. We appreciate you listening. We appreciate everything you do for the podcast. We'll be back next week with a special guest joining us from across the pond in Australia. Till next time.